Now, finally, I haven't gone through each an individual string. Uh, we certainly can uh, at any time, but you know the starting points from an open string. So E, we know that the next one would therefore be F at the half step point. We know the next string would be B. So our next note would be C again at the half step. If we're going to start with G, we know there's a whole step between G and A, so we're going to go G to A. If we're going, uh, starting with the D string, we're going to, again, go from a whole step between D and E. D, that would make that E. We've already done the A, B, and we've done the uh, half step between E and F. So you can run those all the way up the neck. It's very important to eventually find yourself familiar with the uh, notes on the fretboard, where they are. It makes translating, uh, hearing it, somebody tell you to play an A chord, knowing exactly where that is on the neck, uh, much quicker, much easier. And you will develop that over time. Uh, the easiest uh, way, at least for me through the years, is be to start with these two the sixth string and the fifth string because that's where all of your chords are going to start or between these two so if you know at least where the starting point is then getting to the next point is much much easier so final part where you actually get to do something with the guitar now so you must first of all take your pick and your pick will rest between your index finger and your thumb in whichever fashion you feel most comfortable. Now you'll see that a pick has a pointy side and it's got a fat side, so fat sides to be held onto and the pointy sides to go onto the strings. Some people use it a little more sideways and they come a little more off to the side of the pick down here when they're picking. Some people are more direct in how they strike it. It's whatever you develop your comfort level with, but the easiest, the first thing is you got to hold it in between. And I personally use my uh, middle finger as well to kind of support it a little bit so it doesn't go sliding all over myself uh, or fly out of my hand when I'm trying to play. So when we pick, in order to increase our speed and our accuracy, we want to be as efficient as we possibly can with our picking hand. In my case, I'm right-handed, so my picking hand is going to be my right hand. Um, I will start on a downstroke, which means that I pick towards the floor, and I, my next one will then be an upstroke towards the ceiling. Floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling. And as you'll see, I'm doing very little work. It's mostly in the fingers, a little bit of wrist, but it's mostly in the fingers, very little work. Now, if I wanted to speed up, then in, in doing it, this way I'm not really exerting a lot of energy still but I'm increasing that that rate I'm increasing those beats <laughs> pardon me dealing with a little bit of a stuffy nose now in order to do that with just a single downstroke pa pattern or a single upstroke pattern it's much more difficult to try and copy or to replicate that uh, with the same type of efficiency And, you know, I also don't have the same kind of control, and I just, I'm, I'm not fast enough. But I can double it just by going up and down. Same thing with going up. It's just much, it's not efficient. It doesn't work very well. So we will always make sure that we are alternating our picking at every time. And the more you practice it, the more natural it becomes, and you will just have a natural up-down picking pattern. Now, you want to make sure that your fingers on your fretting hand or your in my case my your left hand and uh, your picking hand we want to make sure these two are in coordination with one another so to in, and we want to make sure that we pick the notes cleanly uh, in order to pick the notes cleanly you've got to put your fingers obviously in the right spot at the same time that you put your pick uh, on the right string that comes with practice and it starts with going very very slowly and working up over time the more you practice the faster you will get at it it's very important to start slow and get used to striking the notes purely and cleanly it will make you a far better player over time um, and while it sounds like it's much more fun or sometimes it's just frustrating to get to um, a level where you just want to just kind of play um, you can create a lot of noise and you're not really 
able to produce the things that you're looking for. Um, so it takes a little bit extra time, but it's so much worth it, uh, much, so much more worth it because it, your, the purity of your sound will come through and your, your ability uh, to find those notes uh, accurately every time. So to coordinate those, this takes takes a, this is monotonous and and very dreary uh but it's what we have to do to to again perfect our skills or always improve i don't think anybody has perfected them yet um so we will start on the f note of the sixth string so the first fret and we will start with the downstroke and we will use our four fingers our index middle ring and then pinky we have to develop our independence of fingers uh, and as we start to play so that they can do different things. So we will start with a downstroke and then an upstroke on the next fret. And then the next fret downstroke and the next fret upstroke. Now, when you place your fingers to get a nice clean sound, you want to be as close to the bottom of that box as you can get to without going on top of the fret. When you go on top of the fret, it kind of mutes it. When you're in the middle of it, it kind of gives you a little buzz. But when you're right there, nice little tight spot, it gives you a nice clean sound. So we want to get used to playing at the bottoms of the boxes. Now we're going to do that one, two, three, four pattern or using one, two, three, four. And as we go through lessons in, in time, uh, we'll be talking about our fingers, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. That's what will be charted out in the like. I will help you uh, see which finger goes where uh, in various scales and the like. But in order to get them independent, we will just do this little exercise. We'll use all the strings, and then we will move all the way up the neck and all the way back down the neck. Um, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes a day is all I would ever ask of anybody to practice. Uh, you don't have to do the whole thing over every single day if you if you know once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, but Let's start here. So we do our down, up, down, up, next string, 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 one, two, three, four, next string, down, up, down, up. Now here comes the fun part and the more complicated part. Let's slide up one fret to that same spot. And now let's go down four three two one still alternating our picking with a down up down up four three two one down up two one down up down up four three two one guess what's coming next let's slide up one and let's go back up again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's slide up one. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, up again. We will continue that all the way up to the twelfth fret. So we will finish our last one at a and then instead of going up again, let's slide down one. sliding it down now you see as I didn't get my fingers in the right spot you heard those little bing and again gotta practice more often than I have been so that is our first exercise it is uh, crucial and boring but it's very very important